Hi, I'm David. Today on 3D Make It, we're going to talk about Prusa Slicer 2 and supports. Let's go! We're going to jump into Prusa 2 and using supports and models. Um, we're going to use an iPhone 6 Apple Watch stand on Thingiverse. My wife wanted one, so I grabbed this one and resized it to fit an iPhone 8 Plus instead of the iPhone 6 that it had. But that's not the story. We're going to jump in and we're going to add supports both automatically and manually to the model. We'll watch it print and then I'll show you the results. Let's go. Okay, now we have Prusa 2 open. So in this version of Prusa Slicer, we can add through this square right here. If we hit the add button, it'll pop up. We can go to our downloads and grab the stand. Um, the other way we can do it is we can go file import and import the STL and grab the stand. The last way we can do it is go to the downloads folder and just drag that right into there. Um, and we'll just do that because we have a handy. So now we can see that the model's been imported onto the build plate. So the first thing that we should notice about this model here, it's not too terribly hard, but we can see that right in this section here, we're going to run into issues because this is a giant overhang with no outer wall. Now, there's a few ways to approach this. We could add uh, auto support, or we could use a support enforcer. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is just with auto support. So if we come over to our side menu here, and I'm just gonna go everywhere, support everywhere. The reason is, is because this part is floating over the model. So I'm just gonna grab that slice button and it'll bring up my model nice and quick. And what happens is we can see that all this light greenish uh, material is support material. So it's gonna throw it inside the model here, which is gonna be a pain to get out. It's gonna throw it on this little cat face on the front here. It also throws a little bit on the back and then it also puts a chunk under where we want it. So that's okay, we could print that. Uh, it wouldn't be terrible. The print time on that at my 80 millimeters a second is six hours and 31 minutes. Um, but let's do it another way. So that's auto. So we just select uh, support and everywhere. Um, and that's pretty easy. Now it's worth noting that I have set in my print settings here it, that overhangs over 60% are what are, are what's going to be uh, supported. Sorry, 60 degrees. So uh, you can fiddle around with that with your printer settings. I know that my printer can handle that overhang, so that's why I chose that number. Um, so the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to manually make those supports to get rid of all this uh, extra support on this side we don't need. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go in and add some support where we just want it. Now we use custom supports to do that. In Prusa 2, it's called Support Enhancers. So if we right click and then we go down to Add Support Enforcer and we go to Box, we're going to move our box. Now it's important to notice there is actually a few shapes to choose from in there. So if we go back down, we can choose from box, cylinder, sphere, and slab. You can actually use custom shapes as well if you have an STL kicking around. But what we're going to do is use this box. So I'm going to move the box just over onto my model. I'm moving it just like I would a model on the build plate. So all of these tools will apply. I need to scale that box up. So I need to scale it high and I need to bring it just a bit wider. And we'll turn the model because we're gonna to need to bring it just a touch wider that way too. I'll grab my move. I'll use the little green arrow instead of grabbing the model to find move it up and down and take a peek around in a twirl. It looks like it's touching everything on the back there and it looks like we're touching everything on the front. So, so far so good. I can pull this down just a touch because I don't need it to go all the way up. I just need it to meet the top of that model. So if I use my move tool and I just move it up so it's touching the bottom right there, that's perfect. And if I hit the slice now, it will still slice everything because I have support everywhere on. So it's important that if you wanna use enforcers, just use this support enforcers only. 
It's also important to note that in your print settings under support, you need to have generate support material on for the support enforcers to work. Otherwise, it won't generate them. You don't need to auto generate supports, but you do need to always have this one checked off. It will only generate supports under enforcers or where it's told to in this menu here. So let's hit slice now. And once we get our model, we'll notice that a few things happen. One, here's our supported section and we don't see any extra support material, which is exactly what we want. Two, if we scroll down a bit, we can see that this is more of a grid shape support. Now that can be set in your print settings as well. And I have it set to rectilinear here. Now there is a catch here and I'm going to reslice it in a second, but I do like rectilinear. The one thing that I don't like is this detachable and I've talked about it before. I'm going to add another 10% to that. I'm going to hit save. So that's my default. And then I'm going to go back to my platter. And since it was just a minor save, it won't let me reslice, but we can actually do that from the menus up here and we can just reslice it from right here. Reslice now. So we have our support. We can see what it kind of looks like here. You can see that it's going to build a nice flat bed on the top here and then continue all the way up. And then basically we have our structures only where we want. So that's an easy way to do support where you want it as much or as little. So what does it look like? Let's check out this time lapse. We can watch it print and then I'll come back to the model. Okay, so here is our model. It printed great. Uh, I had no problems with it. Uh, we can see that the support's already off and I'll show you in a second why, but uh, that's what the bottom looks like. So we could see that the support interface came right off and also on the top it came right off. No worries. So it was an easy print. I didn't have a problem getting it off. In fact, the reason I haven't shown you what happened is, well, it popped right off so we can see here uh, that uh, when I picked the model up I picked it up uh, from the side here so I just grabbed it and I was pulling off the printer this way and all of that just popped off it was super easy to come apart um, but yeah I am thoroughly impressed and pleased with the Prusa slicer and the detachable supports again make sure that you raise that number up to 10% of your layer height so in my case since it was 0.2 I did 0.22 but it was an amazing print it, it worked fine I can fit my wife's phone in there and she's happily charging her Apple watch on it well I hope you guys enjoyed that and learned a little bit about custom supports and Prusa 2 Slicer. It certainly was fun showing you all and I hope that you keep on printing. Like and subscribe to our channel to keep in tune for those new videos. You guys are awesome. Have a good one.